Like I'm totally nerding out right now because the idea of doing this, this whole concept makes my witchy Scorpio former true crime junkie heart so happy. <laughs> Hello, my beautiful creative souls, and welcome back. I'm so excited to be doing this super fun video with you today. Uh, this is a clue style type game that you can do with a tarot deck. So just to preface this, this video is something fun that you can do with your tarot deck to help you get to know your deck, to help you study the cards better, uh, or to just do, you know, on a rainy Saturday night uh, with power out or something. I'm going to be doing a clue style game with you guys that solves a murder mystery, but please know that nothing about this is real. There's no actual, you know, murder. There's no mystery. There's no, we're not reading the energy of anybody. It's just for fun. So it's not based on real persons, people, events, etc. This is not something that I came up with on my own. I saw a video by Astro Lady Tara, which I'll leave linked in the description box where she did this particular exercise and I just got hella inspired and ran with it. I've pulled out a ton of decks that I think would work for this. I have already thought about maybe a way that I could transform this exercise into some type of shadow work exercise. Like I'm totally nerding out right now. So I hope that you also can <laughs> appreciate this because the idea of doing this, this whole concept makes my witchy Scorpio former true crime junkie heart so happy. <laughs> so without further ado, uh, let's get in. Let's just get into the video and how you play the game. Oh, one more note. I believe that the video I watched on this exercise, the lady said that it came from a particular book, which I have not read the book, but I will leave a link below because it's definitely now on my wish list. Um, it's a book full of exercises, I guess, like this for getting to know your tarot deck better that don't have to do with divination or anything. So yeah, I'll leave all that stuff linked below for you. I have in front of me a couple decks I've pulled out that I thought would be fun to do this exercise with. I have a bunch more next to me. We'll go over all the decks at the end that I think it would be fun to do this with. But first, I just want to show you what the actual thing is. And for that, I'm going to be using the Haunted House Tarot. So how this works. The court cards are your suspects. Uh, the ace penta like the aces represents the murder weapon and then the major arcana represents your victim and will also be how we solve the mystery the rest of the minor arcana makes up the motives the description of the motives so first step is to separate all the court cards all the major arcana, all of the aces, and all of the minors that don't include the aces. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so now that we've done that, the aces are the weapons. The minor arcana are the motives. The majors, we will get the victim from as well as the uh, clarifying solution. So first we have to find the death card and pull that out. Was that the death card? These always mess me up because they don't have... Yeah, 13, that's the death card. Okay, Angel of Death, right? And then we have our court cards, which I need to separate into suits because the murder weapon determines your suspects. So once you determine your murder weapon, you can put the rest of the suspects away. 
So I'm going to do a run through of how you're supposed to do this and then I'm going to change it because that's who I am and I like to do things my own way and I think I can make it better. <laughs> so um, here we go. So first we need to figure out who the victim is. So that comes out of the remaining major arcana cards. So shuffle them up real good. Who is the victim? Who got murdered? It's so hard to shuffle just like that few cards. All right, this one flipped over in the middle. So we're gonna go with this one. So the chariot, I'm gonna, so the chauffeur. See, this is why I thought it would be fun to do this with like the haunted house deck this theme here, because here we have like an actual character. So the, sheriff, the chauffeur is the victim. All right, and then we have to pick the murder weapon. I'm feeling this one. <laughs> I didn't put just aces in there. How did that happen? Okay, I'm missing the ace of cups. I don't know why sorting that was really hard for me. Okay, here we go. That's funny. I'm like, I'm feeling this one. It like wasn't even a, a card. Okay. So we have the wands. So to my understanding, the pentacles are supposed to be bludgeoned. The knives are stabbed. The cups are poisoned. And the wands are shot. I believe is how that goes. So we have our wands. So that means that our suspect pile is the wands characters because um, they were the ones who, you know, have access to the murder weapon. So we're going to lay these out. Page knight, queen king. Okay. So who done it? Now we have to interrogate them. So in order to find out what their motives are to try and solve the mystery, you lay down a minor arcana card from the ones that are left to figure out their motive. So I guess this would be like the clues. Ooh, we have two for that guy. Now, you can pull them off the top, but I like to shuffle in this particular manner, so. There we go. Okay, so the page of wands here, which is obviously like a little naive, you know, might have overstepped her particular skill set, but she's very eager and has something to prove. Uh, we have the ten of wands, so... She feels overburdened, maybe a little burnt out. Uh, if she is the murderer, then I would assume she kind of got to, like, her threshold, you know, and just, like, snapped on the chauffeur, and it really wasn't his, wasn't his fault, you know? It just, stuff happens. Okay, then we have the Knight of Wands, super passionate, super gung-ho, fire energy, moving. Again, usually kind of something to prove, but has a little bit more emotional maturity than the page. He has the Knight of Cups, and I love this Knight of Cups because he seems so nasty. <laughs> like, the Nine of Cups is kind of a celebration of the culmination of everything that you've worked for, and um, just kind of celebrating your, your riches and how far you've come. And he just looks like a badass MF who just conquered the world and he's having a drink, you know, while his henchmen bring, <laughs> bring the victim out to get put in a grave or something. That's, that's the vibe I get from that. Okay, and then we have the Queen of Wands who is like hot fire, totally in charge of everything, um, knows how to command a room, knows exactly what she wants, gets what she wants, goes after it. She's very, like, 
on point, first to cut you down. <laughs> um, kind of a little salty, but it comes from a place of, of just, you know, confidence and, and the air of security in herself. And for her, we have the Four of Swords. So something's been nagging at her and causing her to not get a lot of sleep. She may be a little bit sleep deprived, which, you know, can happen and snap. And then for the King of Wands, I feel like maybe this is a dead giveaway. <laughs> the King of Wands is like everybody's hero. He just like, he's so passionate. He's very sure of himself. He's super capable. He's like jack of all trades, super macho. Like, again, hero save the world kind of thing. I mean, he's he's carrying this girl out of a burning house with a cigar in his mouth. I mean, how much more relaxed and like, you know, can you get? And for this, we have the nine of pentacles with the three of cups. And the three of cups is generally a collaboration of sorts. And the nine of pentacles is, again, kind of that culmination of everything we worked for, but more in like a material sense. So I feel like he might be in cahoots with this uh, knight of wands over here who's just like celebrating all of his stuff, right? We have a lot of kind of, we have a lot of nines energy, which is just that like, that powerful culmination of like all the resources coming together and just having your stuff together. So I think that these two guys were in cahoots, but I think they had somebody else do their dirty work for them. And I think it was a page of wands. I think it was a little bit more than she could bear, but she did it anyway. And this, this, this lady knows about it. She knows about it. She can't sleep. She knows about it. Now to solve the mystery, we're supposed to flip over the major arcana cards. Well, we're supposed to shuffle the, oh, that's right. We're supposed to shuffle the death card back into the major arcana cards. And then once they're all shuffled, we just flip them over until the death card appears and tells us who it was. So we have the Hanged Man, Temperance, the Devil, oh she is the Devil, the Star, oh, who saw the murder? <laughs> That was cool. I didn't, ex I'm like, there's no way it's going to come out on the one that I picked. Um, that is awesome. So that is the game in itself, right? It is the clue game. It's fun. It's, you get to tell stories, which is kind of what tarot and learning tarot is all about is being able to interpret the cards based on what's next to them and tell a story. So even if you're just learning tarot, I think this would be an awesome exercise to do because it allows you to tell that story, to tell the narrative in a way that's kind of more relaxed and you get to just enjoy yourself and, uh, you could stop and look up the different guidebook meanings if you need to and figure out kind of what it means or just look at the cards for clues. And there's no like right or wrong. Like there's no, um, what I was trying to say, no pressure because you're not reading for yourself or someone trying to get like a right message. It's just for the thrill of it, right? So that was super fun. I want to do this again, but with my own twist on it. So if you want to try this uh, the traditional way, that was like the first rundown. But I want to do this again because I think it would be super fun to add more layers to it. You know, that's that Scorpio vibes, <laughs> true crime vibe coming out again. I feel like we could utilize some extra things for extra clues just to make it last a little longer and to have a little bit more fun with it. So I'm going to reset this and restart it and... Uh, we'll see where we go from there. 
All right, let's do this again. And I do apologize about any like glare and stuff on the cards. Like I just, I couldn't wait. I needed to do this uh, right away. And I really wanted to be able to share this experience with you. So I also really love this because probably because I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. Um, and if I wasn't, you know, if I wasn't doing what I do now, then that might have been the career path that I continued to pursue. So this just like, oh, I just love everything about this. Okay. Enough rambling. First, so we have our suspects, our pile of suspects. You're supposed to sort them out into, oh, I guess, let's sort them out. I think it's a little annoying that you have to sort them out, but I suppose it makes it easier once you choose. Okay. Again, apologies there. It might have been a little out of frame. We're just we're just gonna go with it. Okay. So Our darn mysterious haunted mansion dinner party. Who's the victim? The butler. Who also happens to be the magician. The butler. Usually it's the butler who done it, you know? The butler who done it. Apparently this butler uh he didn't he didn't stand a chance. Alright, so how did our dear old butler kick the bucket? He was bludgeoned. Well, that's that's a thing. Somebody was definitely a... Uh, oops. Somebody definitely had a little bit of uh, fun with that. Alright, so we have our pentacles. It's funny to me that the pentacles are bludgeon and the wands are supposed to be firearms because to me the pentacles are much more like passive earthy which is more of something that someone a firearm would do whereas the wands are you have to be like super passionate and just like when you <laughs> <laughs> okay, psychology land coming out. Anyway, you have to have a lot of passion and anger behind, you know, the the act if you're taking the time to, like, bludgeon somebody. So, I vote we switch those around. So, we're going to do the, the gun scenario because I think the pentacles should be weapons. Should be firearms. Okay, so. We have this sweet little innocent page. The not so innocent knight, the seemingly sweet empress style, queen of pentacles, and the king of pentacles. All right, let's talk about the motive. Okay, this is where I want to change it up a little bit. I think it would be fun to do like, where were they? what was the motive and then what was their relationship to the victim I, I think that would be super fun so uh where were they where was so just this one fell out where was the page during the murder and this is really fun again because it's the haunted house tarot so like you get the the actual scenes so looks like she was in the wine cellar or the basement the knight was out with his friends or seemingly so his friends that looks a little more sinister where was the queen during this Ooh, she was in a conflict and the king was coming to check it out all right so off the bat Based on where they were, uh, the queen looks the most guilty because she was in the middle of a conflict of some sort. Um, all right, so let's go back to the major arcana. 
What was the page's relationship with the victim like? The fool. Upside down. So maybe this magician kind of bossed her around a little bit. Sara is a little bit of like a foolish character. Super naive, you know, didn't really know much about stuff. Um, and maybe just kind of treated her like a child. What was the knight's relationship to the butler? The world. Upside down. Again, I don't think, you know, he kind of let him out of his sight. He may not have trusted him a whole lot. And he might have thought that, you know, he maybe he didn't belong. So maybe they're uh, all upside down. Maybe our little butler here wasn't as nice as we thought he was. So relationship to... The Queen of Pentacles and the butler, he kind of looked up to her. He saw her as like the absolute authority, kind of this mystical, magical creature who uh, just really like knew it all and kind of held the secret keys. There might have been a little bit of attraction going on there, but he definitely respected her uh, and saw her as, you know, not even as an equal, but definitely as more. Yeah, the Empress card pops out as we're talking about that. Okay. So then we have the King of Pentacles. So what was the King of Pentacles relationship like with the butler? The son. They must have been besties, man. Like, they were buddy-buddy. They had drinks together, you know, after everybody else went to bed. Uh, maybe sharing hunting stories. Guy definitely gave the butler plenty of time off. Uh, so no, no issues there. So, based on the evidence so far, I would say the king didn't do it because he obviously came down to check out whatever this altercation was that was happening during, you know, the time of the murder. And he had a fantastic relationship with the butler. Like, it was absolutely perfect. Best friends. Couldn't have been better. The queen is suspect, but I don't think she did it. I think the butler really looked up to her, and I don't think she had any issues with the butler, um, especially with this kind of high priestess energy, but she was definitely on the scene when this altercation was, like, happening, happening. Which leaves us with, essentially, the daughter and son. Who, as we know, from our little relationship cards here, had a pretty rocky, rocky relationship. Had some resentment going on because the butler didn't really treat them, you know, like adults. Which might have been his job. Maybe he was a little bit of a nanny, you know. He was sent to, hey, king over here was like, watch out for my kids, man. Thanks, you know. So, based on that, so I want to do one more motive card. So, for thinking about this in terms of, like, an actual, like, mystery, right? We would have the relationship. What was the relationship like between the deceased and the suspect? Where was the suspect during the altercation, during the event, uh, and what did they say? What was their story that they presented during interrogation, right? What story did they present during interrogation? What story did the... Oh. <laughs> he done it. He done it. She was pissed. <laughs> All right, and what did the king say? Oh, king said it was tearing his family apart. Oh, it's so sad. Okay. Again, this is all fictitious, of course. <laughs> uh, but it's still, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you're having a lot of fun. If you've made it to this point in here, drop a, like, psychology nut, true crime junkie, like, something down below that lets me know that you're, like, you're, you're loving this as much as I am. 
Okay, so. When they were interviewed, the king said he was absolutely, like, heartbroken, devastated. You know, the butler was part of the family. He was one of them. And this is, like, the, his worst possible nightmare. This, it completely tears his family apart. Because we have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. And the Ten of Pentacles is all about, like, it's the... You have reached the ultimate status. Like, you are the King of Pentacles. You have everything. You have the house. You have the family. You have, like, it's all there. Your material world, like, whole, you know, 2.5 kids, white picket fence, great job, 401k. Like, you got it all. The Queen of Pentacles here with her Four of Cups, she's just straight up pissed. She's like, how did I not see this? I can't believe my, assumingly, children <laughs> would do this. It's just like, uh, she's just so irritated. The Four of Cups is usually about kind of not even like caring anymore and kind of being so focused on other things that you're not seeing what's right in front of you. Um, and just like an overall just like dissatisfaction and disgust and like lack of caring. All right, <laughs> then we have, I'm going to jump over to the page here. We have the page with the seven of pentacles and the seven of pentacles is all about letting like roots and seeds plant and take their course. So I'm guessing that she blames herself for this happening, but I don't think she actually did it. She knew about it. She planted the seeds and she said something that then made her brother go and do it. Because, I mean, we have the Ten of Swords. I mean, can it get any more blatantly obvious than that? <laughs> um, but especially with her, like, down here so worried. She was hiding, you know, in the cellar when this whole thing happened. And she knew it was going to happen, but she, like, didn't want to be involved. And she was super nervous about it. Because, again, she kind of planted that seed and the brother, like, took it off and ran with it. And... And with the Ten of Swords, you know, the Ten of Swords is usually about an internal death. It's about just absolutely obliterating yourself mentally. Um being taken over by anxiety and depression and things like that. Which is interesting because the wands would indicate that this was a crime of passion. But there's no passion here. It's just cold. It's calculated. It's ruthless, you know. And I think why he did it was because of this world. I think he felt if he got rid of the butler that he would then have the keys to the kingdom he could do whatever he wanted right nobody was telling him what to do anymore nobody's tattling on him keeping tabs on him treating him like a child he could be everything he wanted to be all right so now that we've solved it i think the mother walked in on it and she was pissed i think that's what this is the three of pentacles i think that the mother walked in while this was happening and was pissed and the daughter was hiding again, like I said, in the basement or somewhere else and was like, I don't want to have anything to do with this. And he was kind of like, oh, poop, what have I done? <laughs> um, and she's like, well, too freaking late now, kid. You know, so that's that's what I'm seeing here. Now, let's see. Let's see what the cards have to say about, you know, who who done it. So I'm going to shuffle this until I feel like it's good. I don't know if that's good. All right. The hermit, the emperor, he pulled the trigger, man. I'm telling you. Wheel, <gasps> the king. Man.
Maybe he didn't really kill him. Maybe he faked his death and they're running away together. Yes. <laughs> or that could be, you know, he has skeletons in the closet, right? Okay. So maybe the king was a little bit too upset about it during the interrogation. And they're actually in cahoots. Maybe they're going to run off to Cuba together. But they're secretly gay. Oh, yeah. They're starting a family. They're, they're running away together. It was all part of his master plan. He faked the death. They were in love. They worked really hard on it. They worked together. And this was like the unfolding of everything they had worked for. So not only were they best friends, but they were lovers. And I'm so happy for them. Leave all their bratty, <laughs> their bratty family behind. Okay, see, that was fun, right? That was way more fun and exciting and time-consuming <laughs> than the other way. So that is the, I think it's, I believe it was called like the Who Done It, but I don't know. Clue, murder mystery, true crime simulation, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I thought that was super fun. I love this. I'm definitely going to be doing it again. I would love to do, be able to adapt this into some sort of shadow work exercise. I think that that would be super fun. So I'm going to show you the decks I have that I think it would be super fun to do this exercise with before we kind of close up shop because I'm obsessed and I want to do it with all the decks now. So first, of course, we have Supernatural Join the Hunt. This would be amazing to do with any type of fandom deck, I think, because you already have the running storyline going throughout. Like, you already know the characters and, like, all their motives and characteristics. You could be like, I could totally see that, you know? <laughs> I think that would be super fun. So this is a Supernatural uh, Tarot, which oddly I have, like, super fallen in love with. Some of these decks are from my winter favorites, which I hope to get out as kind of a uh, video soon. Just, you know, decks that I worked with during the winter. I think that would be super fun. But most of this deck is like characters from the show. So I think it would be super fun, like I said, to do some sort of uh, game like that with this particular deck. This deck is great for, like, archetypes and, like, because it's a TV show. Like I said, you already know everybody and kind of their their motives, their habits, where they hang out, their relationship to each other, and I think it would be super fun. So, that is definitely a fun option. Supernatural tarot deck. Or literally, like, any fandom deck. TV show deck. Next, of course, we have Tarot of the Vampires because, hello, spooky. A lot of these decks you'll see <laughs> have kind of that, like, spooky murder mystery vibe to them because isn't that the whole point, right? Love this. Ten of Swords right on top as we open the deck. So, this, again, it has that, like, mystery vibe to it. There's lots of blood already in it. There's lots of passion and different, like, like, she already has blood on her, like, this would be a super fun deck to do it with. They, all the cards have, like, super big personalities. There's so many different, like, characters in here. And I feel like you could kind of personify them and their different positions different really well. Like, ooh, talk about accomplice, right? <laughs> little devil there whispering in your ear, the little snake. So... I think this would be a super fun deck to do this particular exercise with. And if you're interested in looking at any of these, um, I'll leave the links for them below so you can check uh, them out for yourself. Next is the Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot. I thought this one would be super fun because it's kind of like twisted childhood fantasy 
images to begin with. So that would make like a super fun story. Like, and it, there's already like weird stuff happening in some of the cards. So I feel like that would really make it fun to try to like interpret and figure out like who done it, what they were doing. Again, very like emotion and very emotive. Lots of already like um, blood esque <laughs> type imagery. Um, this one could be could be really really fun to do something like that with. So this is the Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot. Another one that I thought would be fun, some people might not appreciate this, but this is the Happy Tarot, and I just like that kind of sick sense of humor, like, I don't know, like, all these little fun, happy, like, Candyland characters, and like, there's, oh my god, there's a murderer amongst us, we gotta figure it out, you know, like, <laughs> it just seems so fun, you know, and the exercise itself lends it to, like, the inner child. So doing it with this fun, like, Candyland-inspired deck, I think would be lots of lots of fun. This is a deck that's, no, like, nothing else I own. As you'll see, like, the other decks in this uh, that I picked for this are all, like, super dark-themed. But I don't know. It's, like, that, like, playful, childlike, kind of disturbingly dark um, odd sense of humor that I have, um, that thought this would be a fun deck for that. So that is the happy tarot. All right. So I have three left. We'll do like the next kind of mild one. This is the dark mansion tarot. This is very like Tim Burton-esque. So again, I feel like it would lend itself well to that particular like story aspect like, you have the wedding. Like, here's all these guys, like, fighting. She's going on a trip. Tightrope walk, tight walker. Like, all the characters have a super fun personality. That fool. Ugh. Hate him. <laughs> not hate. Hate's a strong word, but he's definitely not my favorite. But look, look at the magician. Like, isn't he such a character? I just thought of something. Wouldn't it be fun to do like to do major arcana instead of the court as like the suspects? Like who done it? Was it the star? Was it the devil? Was it the sun? Like it would just add such a layer of motive and just like or judgment, right? It would add such a layer of like motive and story behind it and um maybe the and maybe the Major Arcana could tell you more about, like, the archetype's personality. So you could get, like, to know their personality as, you know, a suspect. So many different ways you could go with this. Okay. So that was the Dark Mansion Tarot. Then moving back into, like, a Dark Fantasy-esque, we have the Tarot de la Nuit. And this one is pretty much all people. So that would make it extra fun. Again, this kind of has that like spooky, otherworldly vibes. Very storytale esque. It would just be like a super fun one. I feel like there'd be so much betrayal in this world. Like, it's like so juicy, dark fantasy drama. <laughs> so that is Tarot de la Nuit. And then last but not least, out of the ones that I currently have in my collection, I pulled out this one. This is the Edgar Allan Poe Tarot, which, I mean, hello, it's Poe. Like, <laughs> how could you not pick this one, right? Um, this one would be a little more difficult just because I think some of the characters repeat a lot. Like, you see Poe and, obviously, his 
uh, deceased wife in a lot of the cards. There are definitely other characters, but you do run the risk of like getting the same character twice. Uh, quite often, which could, you know, I suppose pose a problem. But you could just pretend they were different people, I guess. But again, just like a super fun world. Lots of like, you know, sinister things happening. Lots of drama. The macabre. <laughs> so I just think that would be a really fun deck to do this exercise with. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed filming it and doing it. Let me know if this is something you're going to try, if you have tried it. Um, I want to I wanna nerd out about all the things down below. <laughs> Talk to me about your true crime passions, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I think this is, again, like I said, an overall just excellent exercise to get to know your tarot deck in a different way, to get to practice storytelling with the tarot, because that is how you uh, learn to read cards the best, you know, is through storytelling. And this is a fun, structured exercise that allows you to do that without any pressure about, you know, being wrong or whatever. Like I said, I think it would be fun to kind of adapt to some type of shadow work um, exercise or something like that. So yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. Again, thank you so much for spending your time with me today, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care, guys.